Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 79, we'll take a look at the last caching topology in kind of our tour or journey of these caching topologies, which is a near-cache hybrid. So, so far, we took a look at a single in-memory cache in Lesson 76. We then, in our journey in Lesson 77, uh, looked at the differences between a single in-memory cache and a distributed cache, otherwise known as a client-server. In the last lesson, number 78, we took a look at replicated or in-process caching. And now, in this Lesson 79, we'll take a look at a near-cache hybrid. And then we'll wrap everything up together in the next lesson, number 80, on how to choose the right caching topology through a various looking at various factors. And so in this lesson, let's focus on looking at the near cache hybrid. I'm going to be using, again, to be consistent, uh, Apache Ignite. Uh, Apache Ignite is an open source caching technology uh, that can be used in a variety of platforms, including Java and C Sharp. And so I figured it would be a good example so that I don't lock the examples into a particular platform or technology. And let's take a look at a near cache hybrid. Uh, we saw in the two prior lessons the use of a distributed cache and a replicated cache. The replicated cache was very fast because all the data was in memory. However, what if we have too much data? <laughs> what if the cache size is too big? We're going to consume way too much memory. And therefore, the distributed cache tends to be a little bit better, but it's slower. Is there a way to have both? And the answer is yes. And that's what a near cache hybrid is. And so with the near cache hybrid, we do have a distributed cache. And this is called a full or a backing cache. And then what we have is something called a front cache. And this is actually within each service or maybe a user interface. And this is typically a smaller version. It's a subset of the full backing cache, generally an MRU or an MFU, most recently used or most frequently used cache. And now there is a client library such as Apache Ignite that sits within each service component that then communicates with the full backing cache to be able to synchronize the data between the full cache and our front cache. So that's kind of a near cache hybrid. However, notice the difference between this, which looks like a distributed cache, and the replicated cache we saw in the prior lesson. And because here, notice that the client libraries between those service components are not talking to each other, which means that each service component may have different data in their cache from one another. And so that's an important distinction because this is not the same thing as replicated caching. The data that's in memory in each of those service components is not the replicated data. Again, each one may have different data. Now, because this is very similar to a replicated cache, um, the primary four kind of caching tools or technologies that do support a near cache are Apache Ignite, Hazelcast, Gemfire, or Oracle Coherence. And so you can see either any of those four. Um, there's, there's, I think, others around. These are the four primary ones that are uh, available to support a near cache hybrid. Let's actually take a look. Now, because a near cache hybrid does have an external server like a distributed cache, again, this is a hybrid, we do need to start Ignite. And so let's get Ignite started right here. And now this is where the full backing cache is located. Notice this is external to my services. Okay, now within each service, Let's see what the code would look like. And first, we add, of course, the necessary jars or DLLs associated with um, both Ignite and any other services we need. Now, what I'm going to do is create the same thing we did before, a cache configuration of all the names of our customers. Now, watch what happens here, though. What I do here is I created Ignite configuration, and like the distributed cache, I set the client mode here to true which means I do have a client and a server. The difference is this. With the near cache, what I create is something called a near cache configuration. And that gives me a map. Again, this is going to be a string string map containing the customer ID and the corresponding name of that customer. But notice the difference here. 
I only have a partial subset of data. And so what I'm going to set is what's called an eviction policy. Now an eviction policy for that near cache says I can't hold all of the data. So notice I'm doing an LRU eviction policy factory which says give me 20,000 names. That's what I can store. And that's the only amount I can. Once that cache fills up, in order to make room for something else, I have to evict something. The LRU means the least recently used cache, which produces an MRU kind of cache. And so this is the eviction policy that says the least recently used go out to make room for somebody else to come in. And so that's where those eviction policies really come into play. Again, because this is a hybrid, I only have part of the data truly in memory. Notice I start Ignite, but here I'm passing in that Ignite configuration, which sets my client mode to true. And so that gives me that client library. Now, watch this. I do a get or create cache, passing in both that server config as well as the near config. And so now, let's go ahead and update a name. And so I'm going to get the customer ID from the request being made. There's the customer ID, let's say 123. And here is the new name. So I'm going to get that name from the request. And there's the new name. Now, I would like to get the old name, just to say, I see you changed your name from Mark to William. And so what I'm going to do is a cache.get with that customer ID. And that gives me the old name. Now I do a cache.put with that customer ID to the new name. Now the interesting thing here is this. The near cache, when I do that cache.get, will be the first cache searched. It looks in my in-memory data grid. If it finds it, it uses it. If it doesn't, then the client library will go down to the full backing cache and be able to get that name. And again, if that full backing cache doesn't have it, that's when it goes out to the database to add it to the full backing cache to then add it into my cache. And the same thing here with the cache.put. When I do a cache.put, it's added to my near cache as well as the full backing cache. However, in my cache, which is in memory, if there's no room, that's when that eviction policy that you see about in the middle of the screen there, that LRU, the least recently used, means the least one used, take it out and add it, and then add it also to the server cache. And so that's kind of how this near cache hybrid works. It's a very complex kind of caching, um, generally used mostly for user interfaces, or in situations where we do want to contain some memory, for example, these names of customers, but we have too many to store all of them, but we want a little bit better performance. And so for more information, I'm very excited to announce the release of the Fundamentals of Software Architecture by myself and Neil Ford, uh, which will be published on February 25th of 2020, in a little bit actually. Um, however, if you go to the link right now at the time of this, this recording, uh, you can actually get a pre-release, which is an early, early release of the first four unedited chapters. Um, also, um, please stay tuned to Software Architecture Monday, where every other Monday I do a lesson in software architecture. I do also offer private training classes to companies. Um, if you go to the website uh, link there under training, um, you can see training agendas for both software architecture as well as microservices architecture and design. Um, also, I do speak at public events and also public trainings, which you can actually get that information by going to my upcoming events uh, page on my website. And so this has been Lesson 79, Caching Topologies, the Near Cache Hybrid. This ends our tour of the four various caching topologies. Now in Lesson 80, in the next lesson in two weeks, uh, what I will be doing is putting all these together to show some selection criteria, both in microservices and in general, about which kind of caching topology should I use now that I understand that there's four. And what conditions should I use? a distributed versus a replicated. Does a near cache work in microservices? And so I'll answer all those in upcoming lesson number 80 on choosing the right kind of caching topology. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Thank you so much for listening.